Well, why do I want to make games? Um, yeah, that's a, it's, it's a, it's a weird question. Um... When I was a kid growing up, uh, there were many things that inspired me and taught me about the world. You know, we've been in the generation that has grown up with games. It's a major, major, major part of all of our childhoods. And... And then when I was 14, my friend was like, you need to check out this cool game called World of Warcraft. And I, was, <laughs> and I begged my parents I wanted it so bad because I saw the cinematic and it looked amazing. It taught me a lot more than anything else, I think. And Games are the, you know, the youngest medium. Um, giving back to the medium and expanding its potential and seeing where it can go through our own work. There's, there's room for uh, creating really interesting and new kind of experiences and things. Uh. Uh, and as I was playing it, I was like, I want to I wanna make this, I want to make these kind of things. I enjoyed it. If that was what I really enjoyed, I should be doing that. I'm very, very certain that game design is something I would love to do. It's just a matter of can I, can I actually make it a reality? The one that I could actually interact with was games. So I guess there's, there's stories everywhere in many different forms, but games are the one that you can leap into. So as a kid, they inspired me, and now I, I love making them. You know, I guess for one day for my own kids, that would be cool. I really, really love the psychological side of games, not in a bad way. For example, there was a game called Dear Esther, um, and it wasn't really a game, it was more just kind of you walk around in this beautiful area um, and kind of experience the scenery and maybe listen to some someone reading poetry. You know, the best way that I can see you can express yourself, it's, it combines graphics, sound, narrative storytelling, and the big new age thing, which is interaction and having this sort of instantaneous feedback loop. And... Even if there's a story that's taking you somewhere, you're still the one, you're in the game. You are doing these things. You're, you have some input to make something happen. Uh, whereas in a film, you're just passively sitting there or even in a book where you're passively reading that. It's definitely interactivity. Yeah, it's, the game developers are like cats. You come into this room and this wheelchair with this weird head just kind of... They, they're all really independent. Yeah, and I'm like, no, I don't want to play this anymore. And they want to have things their own way. But that is such a brilliant, brilliant design thing. Because they're creative types and they have ideas about how things should be. For some, the, the room itself looks very creepy. They, they'll, they'll tell you how they think things should be. You see this thing come out and it is the scariest fucking thing ever. Um, especially the ones that work at home a lot because they're not used to talking to other people very much. I was so freaked out but I was like that is such good design and the fact and then I would go and tell my friends about it and they go oh yeah I didn't even really notice that. They'll tell you, they'll tell you exactly what they think. Which is fine. Though. And I'm just like, I can't enjoy a game anymore. I've got to sit there and analyze it, even if I'm sitting there enjoying it at the same time. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what they wanted. So, I'm not really a, like I'm, I'm. I don't really. I didn't really. Ma no. I, no, no, no. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, as a career, yeah, it's difficult. It's a difficult career. Every time I tell someone that I'm a game developer, they're like, Whoa, that's so awesome! I'm like, yeah, it is! More than pretty much anything else I've seen is, like, one of the most cross-disciplinary things that you can do. Um, 
there are so many aspects that you can fold into this um, discipline, into this idea of making games. I don't think I wanted to be an indie to begin with. I think I wanted to, coming out of uh, high school and then university, I wanted to get a job. I wanted someone to pay me to do what I love. It's not always possible. Uh, the Australian industry was, was in a lot of trouble uh, at the time, which means that not anyone is necessarily going to pay you to make games. So sometimes you have to do it yourself. We're all kind of just putting in our free time to do this and then you know, hopefully when we release in a couple of months, um, we'll do well and we'll kind of be able to leave our day jobs. Uh, but currently for work, I work at a pub during nights, usually till 3 a.m., which is just, hopefully I won't have to do that much longer. <laughs> the Australian game developers are mostly made up of independent developers. So a lot of them would work from home. Uh, some of them would even have a day job, so they might have something else that they do and then at night they come home and work on their games so they probably have no free time and on their weekends that's all they do and the ones who uh, have no full-time work and are just working on their games probably a similar life to a student that they would probably eat a lot of uh, rice and noodles because they don't have enough money to, to afford them. If I do have spare time I see my boyfriend. <laughs> I'm not sure if we would even be doing this if it was for the money. It's such a risky marketplace and there's so much competition that I can't see it really being a strong enough motivator. It's like asking is is art a good business financially or is or is music a good business financially? Um, do you remember like back in the 1980s if the like you know American parents and they walk into their teenager's bedroom and they say what do you want to do with your life? And the teenager says, I want to be a rock star. And the parents go, oh no. All our college fees, they down the drain. Like it's a waste. Our kid wants to be a musician. They, they panic, right? Any creative field can be like that. I think music can be a hugely successful business. A lot of people make a lot of money out of music. Games? Similar. Uh, there's a few studios in Sydney, so uh, there'd be about six or seven studios who are making money. Uh, but there's a lot of students and people just starting out who, who don't really make much money at all. I would yeah. guess that at least 99% fail. 99%? My guess. I would guess. Um, it's, it's a thing where it's partly because it's an industry which has a really low barrier to entry. Pretty much anyone can like now make a game. Like Hollywood, for example, like a lot of people go to Hollywood because they see, they get so excited by the idea and they, they try and then maybe don't get very far and then they give up and, and go away. I think the games industry is very much like that. People get very excited by games and they love games and they don't perhaps realise how much hard work there is involved and how, how difficult it is to, to kind of get into it. Uh, or to kind of do well, like it's easy enough to make a game, but to make a game do well is probably that hard step. Uh, and we see a lot of the people come and go, but the ones who are really dedicated and stick with it are the ones that generally make some money. M myself and Rowan both really want to be able to create something to have that kind of artistic uh, expression. And that's what we're really doing, and we've kind of become a bit more hard-nosed about that since the very beginning. We hope that we can make some money out of it, but we're not going into this because we're trying to compete in the marketplace. We're going into this because we have a really good idea for a game and we want to make it work. I very firmly believe that the best game design comes from not just thinking about games. It comes from looking at the world around us and really looking at the world as a whole and bringing that stuff in. And it, Because games are an art form and the best art comes from human experience. And so finding new ways to create human experiences and that sort of thing is really interesting. I want to make a game that's like, by the time someone finishes playing it, they'll say that they just won't, they, yeah, that, or they'll just be speechless. I played Journey and by the time I finished, I mean, it's two hours long and I was crying my eyes out when I finished. <laughs> I was just like half so sad that it was over and also half that I'd had an amazing, experience that you know was in a completely different world and I was 
in someone else's body, but it was still my experience. And I think that's amazing. I want to create something like that for someone else. If you're passionate about something, you will put yourself into it and you'll do well. And that at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you're doing as long as you're able to get that passion and you're enjoying yourself. We're planning for the game to fail. We're, we're planning around the idea that the game will sell no units at all and everyone on the team will go, well, this is terrible. We've made an awful game and we're not going to work with you again and we'll just have to go, oh, well, that sucks. I think that the sacrifices you make for, for your love of games are worth it. If they weren't, you wouldn't keep doing it. As long as we make something that we're both proud of and we think we're happy with, then it's okay. We would love it if the game made money and we'll do everything we can to try and promote it and try and get it out there, but if all we do is make a game that we're really proud of, that's okay.